James here and I'm off to Scotland instead of going to the fully charged live for Sunday here. The reason for that is I just remembered I need to drive up to Scotland in the Nissan Leaf 40. <laughs> so if I set off at 5 o'clock uh, after the show, I'm going to get home for most likely 3 in the morning or 5 in the morning especially with all the rush hour traffic of everyone leaving the show. So I thought I'll just um, call it a day. I had a brilliant day yesterday. It was so much fun. But I must say I have to head off home. So on this trip, I am going to go 65 and I'm going to go up the M6, M74. And I'm just going to wing it. I'm not even going to find the charge point, I'm not going to bother about uh, what my state of battery level is, I'm just going to gun it at 65 miles an hour, we have 16 degrees overcast sun and we have an 8 mile an hour tailwind, so it's kind of the perfect sort of condition for the Leaf anyway, for going long distance with my game plan from when I came down here to Milton Keynes, but on the return trip, <clears throat> like I said, I'm just going to wing it, and we're just going to see what happens uh, on the way. So the reason for doing this is that most people would be driving the car how I am. Not everyone uh, knows or want to drive the way I do on the way down. So. <clears throat> This will give us a slight comparison. Also, the other reason why I'm going up the M6 instead of the M1, even though the M1 is a little bit quieter, is because the M6 is shorter by about 25 miles, roughly. And having that little bit shorter sort of distance, um, you know, if I do hit this sort of like peak point of charging, uh, the tapering that I experience near the end of my journey down to Milton Keynes, then at least I don't have that. I've got that little bit less sort of distance to go. But this hopefully shows you guys what it's going to be like <clears throat> to just wing it as you go. Once I hit about 30% and check out the sort of like nearest charge point to me and then charge up maybe roughly about 20 odd percent and charge up to 90 so I'll have to stay there for at least 40 45 minutes we're currently at 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour which is brilliant because of the tailwind and we're averaging 50 miles an hour so far um, we had to draft at the start of the trip just because of the roadworks and the lorry so I just drafted behind the lorry because I couldn't overtake them anyway so now that I am on the road out and open on the M6 I am hitting 65 like I said and we'll see how it all ends <laughs> hopefully not in tears so at Fully Charged Live the three main things that I really enjoyed about yesterday was the I-Pace experience, the Jaguar I-Pace. It was like a little game, you had to drive between two cones and the cones had lights above them. They would go green and then there's a next set of cones randomly generated somewhere else that were blue. So the first set of cones that you go through, once you go through the green cones, then the blue cones up ahead would turn green and then there would be a new blue cone, a uh, new set of cones with blue lights. So you had to go through all the green ones and the blue ones was just to show you when the next sort of like checkpoint that you had to go through was. So I went to that nearer the end of the day because it was raining in the morning and I uh, didn't really fancy standing in the rain. Uh, so handed over my documents uh, for my driving license and stuff and uh, sat in the queue. It was, it was a bit like Alton Towers. I was there for uh, 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes for uh, possibly a two minute drive in the Jaguar I-Pace, my first experience of it. Uh, honestly, I don't really remember too much about the interior of the car because there's a massive queue and the briefing was pretty short it's just basically telling you where the buttons are so you had to drive through the cones and stuff so I did my run and I finished 
26 out of uh, 160 odd people uh, for that day. So I thought I did quite well. I was, I was quite chuffed with um, the score that I got. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a, such a lovely car that was so smooth to drive and the turning circle on it was amazing. Um, I must say, I'd, if I get a chance, I'd love to drive the I-Pace and have a longer sort of like drive in it, uh, something a bit more of an experience. But at least I can say that I drove on Silverstone. Maybe not the track, but at least I drove on Silverstone, the little square parking area. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's my claim to fame of driving around Silverstone doing donuts in the car park in the Jaguar i -Pace. and this was the same last year was the paddock and down there it was just the immense amount of electric vehicles that were there and for me I think the DeLorean was one of the ones top of the list at the show including the Formula E cars that were on display from BMW and the Jag is it Jaguar? Maybe I'm wrong. I think it was a Virgin. And both of those was amazing to actually see in person. And I mean people have said that they were small, but I didn't it didn't seem that small to me. It was quite it was really wide and quite long. I really love looking at the, the cars down there. And there's also the the Rapide and then you got all the VW, all the classic cars there as well. So the third thing about Fully Charged Live was the people coming up to me and saying, where have you been? We've not seen you for a while and uh, we've not seen you on YouTube. And the, the reason for that is because I'm not really doing that trip from Newcastle to Edinburgh anymore. And, you know, it's setting up the camera to do a video about my daily commute to work and back is one, it's more hassle than it's worth and two, I don't think people really want to watch that and then there's only so much you can really talk about the Nissan Leaf I honestly didn't think I would be covering this same car for over a year and expect people to still be watching me drive this thing up and down the country just to let you know not to worry I'm still alive and I will be making videos but not as regular as before So we're reaching the toll roads here, it's a 30 zone, I've not been here for a while, apparently the M6 toll actually takes credit cards now, which is going to be handy, card only, oh, okay so there's different options, cash and card, card only, let's go this way. We're a class two vehicle, six pounds forty. Right, okay. Hi, yeah. How are you doing? Uh, pay by card, please. Yeah, okay, five there we 30, are. Thanks. Oh, five thirty. I thought it was six six forty. That's weekday price. Oh, is it? Oh, oh bargain. <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Okay, bye. There we go. Awesome cheapness there. We're on the M6 toll. This is like a runway. F1 just bombs it down. <laughs> M6 toll. We are not. We are going to stick to 65. All right, let's overtake this guy. Well, might as well give you a quick update of the vehicle. We're at 21 degrees centigrade on the battery. We still got eight mile an hour tailwind, and we are still going 65 miles an hour. 
4.5 miles per kilowatt hour and we're actually averaging 52 miles an hour which is quick but we're still at 47 percent and we've covered 80 miles that is pretty good going it's pretty efficient when you got some wind up your backside <laughs> so I'm gonna get down to 30 percent and then we'll figure out where we're gonna charge from there So I'm um, here at Sandpark Services and I came, got here with about 23 degrees centigrade on the battery temperature and I'm charging at this Ecotricity which is currently on free vend but the only issue is I think because it's on free vend I'm only getting 39 kilowatts so the battery won't heat up as much as I expect it would do if it's pulling the full rate so we're just going to find out what sort of temperature we get once we reach to 85% before we set off so I'm going to uh, head in go and grab some lunch and it'll be about 30 minutes when I come back to check on the car, see where we are I suspect we'll have to sit here for 40 minutes so we're going to find out once we get back, so I'll see you guys in a bit so we're into 30 minutes of the charging of the car so far we're down to 25 kilowatts we're at 77 percent which is good and leaf spy says our temperature is 37.8 degrees so it's lower than i thought it was going to be just because our charge rate was lower than 43 uh, kilowatts in charge speed <clears throat> so we produce what's that uh, produce I can't calculate, for 14, 14 degrees centigrade extra heat from the battery. So I'm going to leave it for another 10 minutes uh, just so I can go to the bathroom, have a quick break and then we're going to hit, hit the road again. We should be up to at least 85% by that point. covered 196 miles and uh, the battery is down to 30% the next service is in 5 miles and then the one after that is 26 so I'm going to see where we are once we reach the next one uh, if, it, if we're in high 20s I might actually go to the next service station it's going to take us below 20% for sure but I think with the slower charge rate, we should be okay just to top up at a lower state of charge. Hopefully I'm right about that. Uh, the, the current temperature is 38.5 and I reckon because of the tailwind and the good weather, it's uh, helping the car sail through the air a little bit easier. So. We're on 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which is absolutely great for going at 65 miles an hour. This wasn't the same as on Friday when we had a bit of side wind, so this is going to improve things a little bit. <clears throat> I might even dare to actually reach the next service. As long as we can pull 38 kilowatts in the next service station, I'm not too bothered about the last one. As long as the last one we can get above 32 kilowatts, then we're actually winning going 
at this sort of speed and distance before charging although this is the optimum sort of weather and temperature for doing this so it'll be good to see if this is like the way to do it with the battery management um, update I decided to miss that last stop because we were still at 27% on the battery. Now that we're on to T-Bay, we've got two miles left. We're down to 12%, a little bit lower than I wanted to. I think the safe bet would have been to charge at the last stop. But this is just the way we're doing it. We're just winging it as we're driving. The car battery temperature has risen just because we've dropped down below the 20% mark the battery heats up a little bit more when there's less in the tank, as so to speak. So we're at 39.8 degrees centigrade at the moment. And we're one mile away from T-Bay. So I'm just gonna draft behind these, this uh, car and uh, truck ahead of me, just to see if I can get the battery down just that tiny bit. I'm expected to pull at least 37 kilowatts here. Uh, which would be a respectable speed. So we'll see what happens. It's not this turn off, it's the next one. So we're plugged in and charging now and the car is pulling in 37 kilowatts. So it's pretty close to what I guess. Did I say 37? Maybe I did. But <laughs> so yeah, so we charged 37 kilowatts. We should be here for 45 minutes, I would suspect. I'm going to put the timer for 40 minutes, mill around here. There's lovely, the coffee here is absolutely amazing actually, and uh, the food as well. And it's got a nice little shop and a little pond area as well. In theory, we should be getting 16 degrees centigrade at this sort of like state of charge if we're pulling 43 kilowatts but because it's a little bit lower uh, I'm expecting maybe 14 14 kilowatts uh, sorry 14 degrees centigrade in top so we currently have let's have a look uh, we're currently at 39 when we started well 40 so we add 14 to that I'm expecting to be at 54 degrees I'm going to go 55 because we need to charge that a little bit longer to try and get to 85 again. So we're going to come back and see what the temperature of the battery is. I suspect we should be okay. What would be interesting is how much the battery cools down on the next stint because it's mostly uphill and then I'm, I'll probably aim for Abington because that's a good sort of 100 miles away or 90 miles away and then it's downhill from uh, that point to there so that might help to cool the battery down a bit we'll find out once we get to that point but for now my guesstimation is we need to be here for 45 minutes and the battery temperature will be 54 55 degrees centigrade Fine, final orders <laughs> Now I've charged over for 40 minutes. I'm just gonna check on the car. I think it says 70 odd percent on screen over there. Uh, oh, actually we're at 84% after just over 40 minutes. So I think we're probably about 42 minutes now. <clears throat> and we're still pulling 23 kilowatts. But what does Leaf Spy have to say? Lee Spy says we are at 53.4 degrees centigrade. So it looks like the way they've created the battery management system, that the battery temperature on an optimum day will reach about 30, uh, 53 degrees or 54. And I suspect that that is sort of like what they were aiming for. They didn't really want the car to be able to overheat past that point. So even with the 
state of charge being as low as 11% on that high temperature at um, 40 degrees centigrade or 39 degrees the car seemed to be able to handle uh, or manage itself a little bit better than it does before it does feel or it doesn't feel it just seems hot but maybe that is fine although I hear that the optimum temperature for the battery should be about 30 30 35 degrees so we're a little bit over that <clears throat> Obviously, I've been lucky with the tailwind and the nice weather. We're at 15 degrees centigrade. We've still got this tailwind coming in. And I will give... I think it's time to go because we're, uh, we're over 85%. So that actually charged up much quicker than I thought. Uh, also, there's a BMW driver I just noticed that I think he wants a charge as well. Right, okay, I will head off now and I will speak to you guys soon. Drafting behind that lorry as we were going uphill just to conserve a bit of the energy and now that we're rolling downhill I've still got Pro Pilot on and we're doing 65 but we are, well we were at least, not actually producing much energy or using much energy I should say and we were at a point where it was actually on the line so there was no energy use as I was coming down and no battery regen so I wasn't actually gaining or losing energy which meant that it should have had a little bit of time to keep the battery cool and now that we're on the flat the battery is down to 52.6 degrees centigrade so that's a nice little bonus there but I will try and keep a steady 65 miles an hour going back uh, getting to Abington, which uh, should be about 90 miles away. Right, so the leaf driver is going to be a couple of minutes. He gave me two fingers the other way, not <laughs> not the rude two fingers. So I expect them to be not too long. So I am going to sit here. This will give the battery a little bit of chance to cool down and before we charge up. To tell you the truth, 26 miles, 33. Yeah, we, we definitely need a little top up. Yeah. Basically, I only really need about 5-10 minutes of top-up just to get home. But I will sit here for the full 30 minutes at least just to see what sort of charge rates we get. And uh, I might even stay here for 40 minutes to see <coughs> if we reach to 85% or if we have to stay a little bit longer. But I just want to see... The main thing I want to see after 30 minutes or 40 minutes is the battery temperature. If it's going to hit that... 53 54 mark because that seems to be the point Nissan with the BMS update has decided that the battery temperature max should reach to so we'll find out once we get going on the charger the gents just cancelling and finishing off so we will get going this is the problem when there's only two charge points and they've been used okay Oh yeah, cheers. Yeah. You definitely got enough, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I never... So, this is another free vend, the third free vend of the day on the third charge of the day. So, 
this trip today has cost me absolutely nothing and uh, the car is currently charging up isn't it is it lights yep lights are flashing right so the temperature beforehand was 90 49.3 degrees let's find out what we're pulling we are currently pulling so the temperature has dropped down by one bar because it was on the red before and we are pulling 22 23 kilowatts not great not bad either i suppose so what would be interesting well it's saying 75 percent will be one and a half hours so it looks like we have totally toasted the battery i think by the point when you get the battery up to the red you really need to slow down the car to get the temperature down i think we got lucky going down to milton Keynes. we had to slow down due to uh, roadworks down to 50 miles an hour and if i did that here then i would be able to charge at a higher rate so i don't think i'm going to stay here for the full 40 minutes i might stay for half an hour just to see how accurate the timing is it could be actually thrown off a little bit i don't think it is it's probably about right for the charge speed that we're getting so 49 degrees equals 22 kilowatts so that's the uh, that's uh, how it goes i think you want to try and keep it below 46 because then you get at least 28 kilowatts in charging speed um yeah overall i'm quite pleased with the update if you need to do 300 miles you can do it in two charges and just wing it on your way up there's absolutely no problems with that i found uh if you have to go that little bit further when you when you're coming up off your second charge make sure you hold back a little bit and not go at the sort of speeds that i have at 65 miles an hour you're probably best to go at 62 or uh, 56 so just draft behind the lorry at that point um overall both techniques if you want to go the distance i'd still aim to use the old technique that i did for the old bms if you only need to do 300 miles in your Nissan Leaf with the new BMS, then just just wing it. Just do it any way you want. Um, I honestly don't think that you should run into any problems. Uh, I was on the phone and I was checking a few things and I was thinking, well, I only need 33 miles to get home and I'm at 55 miles now. So I'm just going to head off and I'm going to use, I'm going to be going at a slow pace because it's on the country sort of roads. So I'm going to see if I can get the battery temperature down a bit and I will do one last charge at um, Livingston just to see what sort of charge rate we pull at a lower sort of speed um, and then we'll call it a day after that. So I'm going to pack up and turn this off and I'm going to head off now. So I'll see you guys in a sec in the rain. I'm at 39%. I've got enough to get to the next charging point, which is back in Livingston, which is 33 miles away. And there's no point in me staying here longer than I need to. So what I was thinking of doing was, now that I'll be driving a little bit slower through the A roads, is to try and get the battery temperature down. So I'm going to try and stick to about 50 miles an hour or 56 miles an hour just to give the battery some time to cool. So I've got this nagging feeling in my head saying to me that I really need to find out what the charging speed is for 47 degrees and 48 degrees because there's a big tapering between 40, uh, 46 and 49 <clears throat> at 46 we have 28 kilowatts and at 49 degrees centigrade we have 22 kilowatts so that, that's quite a big dip that's a big dip from 
the lower charging temperature, the slightly lower charging temperature to this point, and it seems to be between 46 and 49 is where it starts dropping off, and I want to find out if it stays like that for a bit longer, or is it just a drop off at that point? So, like, <laughs> like playing bingo, I want to find out what if I can get the prize for 47 and 48 and win bingo. Is that how you play bingo? I don't know. Anyway, let's find out. I'll try and get the temperature down. <clears throat> I'm kind of finding it a little bit hard. I've got down to 48.1 degrees centigrade and I want to try and cool that down. I'm sure I'll be able to do that when I stop and let the car rest until it drops down to 47 degrees and then we'll plug it in see what charge speed we get once we reach 48 we will stop the charge So made it to the Livingston Rapid Charger here. So we're at 47.3 degrees centigrade. So we've got the temperature down. So let's uh, play some bingo and find out what numbers we get. Communicating, shaking hands, performing, initiating checks. We're currently pulling 26 kilowatts at 47 degrees centigrade. So I'm just going to charge this up and heat this up to 48 degrees and then we'll stop the charge and then we'll set it off again. Right, so we're just over 48 degrees centigrade. I'm just going to let the temperature hit about 48.3 before we stop the charge and restart it just so it doesn't get time to cool down. And then we'll set it off again. So from the numbers here, it really should be 24... Uh, 24 kilowatts that it charged so it drops by 2 kilowatts every 1 degrees at this point right okay I'm just going to stop the charge we're having some charge now I think or has it failed oh here we go right switching on the car 24 kilowatts Mystery has been solved. Right, so I have. Uh, I'm just going to shout bingo. <laughs> right, so I've won. I won the first prize of finding out where each uh, where the main sort of tapering happens. And I would guess from twenty. Oh, sorry, I would guess from forty six degrees centigrade. That is when the major tapering happens. And. Basically, you want to try and stay below that sort of zone if you can, just to get a decent charge rate. Other than that, you're just going to be spending 45 minutes uh, or an hour just to get up to 75% on the motorway. If you go all the way down to 22, 22 kilowatts. Right, so, mystery solved. It's been a great trip. I had... Loads of fun meeting everybody. I'll definitely be going next year. It might be a little bit of an easier trip with the Kona if I go down in that. Other than that, this whole trip today has cost me absolutely zero pennies. And that wasn't because I was being stingy. I actually went to the most expensive charging points and all three of them have lost comms with Ecotricity. So I managed to get free vent for all free charges so that's me done 350 miles overall trip distance 763.1 miles this weekend it has been fun guys and i want to say thanks for watching and if you like this video please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys next time